This is my land. It's gonna stay that way. And what I need from you, my son, is to make sure this family stays safe. I'm calling it off. This is done. Our dad is not a criminal. He did not kidnap anyone. You actually thought you got away with it. This is my son's life you're gambling with. The amount of corruption that I've been able to uncover in Evansdale is unparalleled. And I'm gonna burn it all down to the ground. This isn't a game. You're damn right. This isn't a game. Hello, lovers. I'm your host, Bevy Smith, and I'm elated to be here at the red carpet special for Montrose Blood Rules. Um, I'm so happy to be here because we have most of the actors that are in the film, and we also have the director, my friend, Miss Victoria Rowell, who also stars in the show. Come on on to the stage, Victoria. Hi, Bevy. I am so happy to have you here, my love. You look gorgeous. You look red carpet ready, darling. Oh, I am so ready. I'm dressed from head to toe. And I'm so happy to see you, Bevy. I'm happy to see you, my love. Now, I'm glad that you're not in character as Elaine Montrose because I would be running for the hills. She's <laughs> a serious villainess. Let's yes. talk a little bit about this role and why you were attracted to this woman who seems to be this upright, dignified matriarch, but really she's a thug in pearls. <laughs> she's a thug in pearls, steel magnolia, yes. gangster. Yes. But you know, I love, I love this persona. I grew up with these women in the projects in Roxbury, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. who were selling Avon, who were bowling, who were working at the hospital, but trust and believe if there was a problem, off came the earrings, off came the pearls to defend the family and the house. And so I just love Elaine Montrose. Um, you know, she goes to church. She's an upstanding pillar of society. But at the end of the day, a woman will defend, a lioness will defend the family. So I just loved how strong she was and unapologetically gangster. Yes, she is. She's very strong, unapologetically just um, a gangster. And there's so many twists and turns in this. I mean, we have, well, obviously, family secrets never stay buried. So we do have things that are buried. We have lots of secrets. Um, we have murder, mayhem, all the things. But when you look at the script, what was the, the thing that really drew you to wanting to direct this amazing piece? Right, baby. Well, Kamara Davis is an amazing writer. And it was an honor to work with him. Um, I loved how layered the characters were. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from Robin and Nia and my... Um, anyway, you'll, you'll talk to the other actors, but their stories, my children's stories, with Richard Brooks's character, the, ma the, the patriarch of the family, are so richly developed. And so when you see material like that and our executive producer, uh, Jamie put us in this unprecedented beauty and richness in Mississippi on the Gulf Coast. Yeah. Oh, I was in. Yeah. Because yeah. location can be everything. Loca in this case, the location was another character. There's that beautiful scene where Dell is walking his land and you get to feel the expansiveness of what he's about to lose unless he does something, you know? And, and so that the, the, the location was definitely a character. Yes, the production value, um, Hillionaire Productions, TV One did not skimp one iota on the production value locations. And it matters for a director to have that kind of gravitas to work from. So I was very pleased. Yes. Well, let's talk a little bit about TV One. I know this is not your first time working with them, um, but what do you like about working with them versus some of perhaps, um, you know, because TV One is for us, by us. And yes. so what's it like when you come into a space where it kind of feels like home and it feels like people are really valuing the stories that you're telling? Great question, Bevy. Kathy Hughes, who's the pinnacle of TV One, I remember back in the 90s would have me on radio to help pump up what I was doing on Young and the Restless Diagnosis Murder, even when I was doing foster care events. Yeah. She always saw the value in me as a Black woman and a Black businesswoman. Mm -hmm. And so to be full circle, <clears throat> now on the other side of the camera, which I endeavored to do with my other employers, at times with difficulty that I'm embraced by the executives at TV One 
for the full bloom of who I am. I know you, I know I'm preaching to the choir, baby, yeah. but that's what it means to me to be valued all the yes. way around. Yes. And, and to be valued. And also, um, you know, we mentioned Richard Brooks. He plays your husband. He plays Dell. Yes. And I know you've known Richard for a very long time. Was this your first time working with him? No, Bevy, I campaigned that he would be my love interest. Why not? Who wouldn't want to be the love interest right. of Richard Brooks, right? right? But back in the 90s, we start, we've been working together for 25 years off and on, Bevy. This is probably our fourth project together, mm -hmm. maybe more. I love working with him. If Scorsese can do it with De Niro, I'm doing it with Richard Brooks. You know what I'm saying? I love that. I love that. I love that. And and you know what? We we see a lot of that now with directors and with showrunners that are bringing their folks back time and again. Well, now we talked about bringing Richard Brooks back time and again, but let's talk about bringing this story back time and again as a series because we we live we leave off with a lot of loose ends dangling, darling. So are we going to get a series out of this? From your lips to God's ears, Bevy, because, you know, I've read a lot of scripts. I've done a lot of projects. And this story, I believe, has the weight and has the story that Cam Davis has put on the page to go for five seasons. Yeah. It's sticky eyeball content. That's what I call it. Sticky yeah. eyeball content. Because I want to know, look, you may not get all the answers in the movie. You want to come back and back again. I love how it's open-ended, how Cam just leaves us wanting more. Mm -hmm. And I want to know more. Yeah, Because we don't even know all the answers. So I want to come back. Yeah, I want to see what happens in, in Evansville, uh, you know, I, I, I want to see what's going to happen to the family. Um, and, you know, I think that this is such a great piece because, of course, it is a, it is a lot of murder and mayhem, as I mentioned. But at oh, yes. the heart of it, it's a family story. It's the, about the family dynamic. And that's something that everyone can connect with. No, you know, your mother may not be thug missus like, like Elaine, or, you know. Your family may not own the entire town, but the secrets that are being kept, um, yes. you know, the, 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 all these nuances that make for family to be yes. binded together, bound together, but oftentimes bound together by dysfunction. Yes. And you hit the nail on the head. It is a family piece. It has crossover appeal. Mm -hmm. Anyone can relate to how a dynasty is going to do everything they can to hold on to the dynasty. We see it play out in politics every day today, but we we will learn um, during this holiday season. When I say holiday, I mean the ha Halloween season um, and starting it off right with all of the intrigue and drama and who shot John. Um, <laughs> it's well placed. It deserves a lot more. Um, time on the screen. And um, I think that people are going to really appreciate the family dynamic. And I couldn't have done it without my lead actress, Don Half Kenny, and of course, the rest of the cast. But our leading lady, which, which she just threw down, she was just superb. And I look forward to working with Don and the whole cast again. Yeah. What attracted you to Dawn in her audition? What, what made you say, okay, she's the one. She's, she's the one who's going to carry this story. Well, I'd worked with Don on camera in the past. Okay. And we we get to thank uh, Jamie, our executive producer, for really pinning Don, because Don's working all the time. Mm. But it was a pleasure to, and that's one of the things in our industry, Bevy, I think you'll agree, to come full circle, to work with our thespians who become our friends. Yeah. And we come on to set and you're like, oh my God, this is what it's about. Um, to work with with folks again. Um, and, and there were so many other wonderful experiences uh, as well. But I, I knew that when she was cast, it was going to be awesome because she's such a consummate actress. And, and John Eyes, I can't say enough about John. Um, I mean, John, I'm telling you, Uncle Teddy. Oh my God, played my brother. If I could just work with John again, please, God, please make it happen. Um, because that is pure platinum right there. On definitely, camera. definitely. I, yeah, I didn't know what to think about um, Uncle Teddy. Um, I still really don't know what to think about him. He's, he, he's, a, he's a very interesting character. 
Because uh, when it when it opens up, you think one thing about Uncle Teddy, and mm -hmm. and then by the end of it, you start, you know, like, oh, okay, this is a man who has his reasons, and there's a method behind the madness. Yes, Bevy, and as we all know, there's always one in the family. Yes. <laughs> And he's the one in the family that's going to get his yeah. um, by all means necessary. Without the yes, word. yes mm -hmm. indeed. Well, thank you so much, Victoria, so much for mm -hmm. directing this and for being the star of this. And you are just divine in every single way. And I know that everyone will be tuning in on October 1st so they can catch Montrose Blood Rules directed by my girl, Victoria Rowell. <laughs> thank you so much, my love. And congratulations yet again. Thank you so much, Bevy. Okay, Big buddy. kiss. Thank you, babe. And hugs later. Okay, guys. So we just heard from the lovely Victoria Rowell. Next up on our red carpet is Renell Nicole, who plays Monty in Montrose Blood Rules. Hello, Renell. Hello. Hey, Renell. Good to see you, my love. Good to see you as well. Congratulations on this great, great piece of work. Um, you were really, really uh, very compelling to watch. Um, and, um, you know, seeing you here now like this, so beautiful and poised <laughs> and everything, it's a far cry from your character, Monty. Let's talk yes. a little bit about Monty and, and, and what drew you to her when you read, when you read the script. Oh, well, that's exactly what I love about it is the contrast. I love to be outside of myself and your normal everyday characters that you would, you know, play or see or can relate to. I can't relate to Monty at all in, in real life as far as um, when I come in as adult Monty. So yeah. that's what drew me to the piece is that I love grit. Um, I love when people are real and Monty is real, but she's also scarred. And that's why Monty is Monty. Like she's uh, put in a position where she has to be this tough girl. This was not an option for her. You know, it wasn't what she planned, obviously. Um, but that's what I love about her is like, OK, I have pretty much kind of lost it all at this point. So what yeah. the hell? <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm going to go for it. Go for it. Yeah. 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 What was it like being directed by the legendary Victoria Rowell? Um, and, and was this your first time being directed um, by a woman in, in a, a, a film of this ilk? Um, not for, by a woman, but um, but yes, my first time working with her. And such a gem, such a jewel. Like, honestly, um, I was super excited to even get the opportunity to work with her. But just her vision, what I respect about her is that um, the vision that she gave, you know, as actors, we look at a lot of things as, you know, just from a, a normal actor standpoint through our physical, you know, lens, but mm -hmm. she's looking through that actual lens. So it was always just little nuggets that she kept giving me, like this will make a great moment for you and things like that. And I am always open to direction because, you know, everything's, it's, you know, people interpret things differently. So I truly respected that about her. And then also because it is, she can connect to me as an actress as well. So that was, you know, just the, the cherry on top with working with her. Yeah. And what about the, you know, being on set? Because, you know, of course, this is a story about a family. And I know Victoria as a friend and I know how lovely and loving she is. And I would yeah. only think that that kind of spirit extends to the set. So what was what was it like being on set? Yeah, for sure. Um, one, I always love being in like family atmospheres on set. So that was instantly created. And then also uh, Don was the only person that I got to work with. Because, you know, we had, you know, those scenes, you know, in the prison and things like that. So she was the only person that I got to work with. And then I had Victoria and then Jamie. Uh, so I was looking for that family atmosphere because I knew I was coming in late. You know, they already they had been there for, you know, weeks at this point. So coming in as the newbie um, and then my character is also the outcast. Um, it, I, I never felt like the actual outcast, though. So mm -hmm. it was definitely warm, definitely inviting. And we, you know, played around and had a good old time of too much of a time at some point because we filmed in an actual prison. Yeah, so, wow. That was, <laughs> That's intense. That was really something. Uh, but yeah, it was overall just a great experience. And like, you know, everyone just instantly connected. It didn't take long at all for everyone to kind of warm up to each other. So it was great to kind of come into that energy with knowing, you know, what I knew that everyone had been there and they were probably tired and ready to go. And here I am. <laughs> But now I have to ask you before we leave, because it is a red carpet, what do you have on? I have on, you know, I, I love going to good old fashioned Nova, baby. Okay. Um, I have on a two piece. I don't know if you can really see. 
Okay. Greenery, um, wide lake pet set. Uh, so yeah. Red carpet ready, Renelle. Thank you so much, my <laughs> love, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Now, okay. Next up, we have the producer, Jamie McCoy Lankford. Hi, Bevy. Hi. Welcome to the red carpet, my love. Thank you, Bevy. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I see you all red carpet ready. You have on Chanel. Yes, ma'am. I have on my Chanel today. <laughs> I love it. Well, congratulations on this incredible project. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I love the find of the family dynamics that went into the storytelling, but I also love the twists and turns. So let's talk a little bit about this uh, project and how you came to be a part of it. Okay. Um, well, Kamara Davis, we call him Cam. He's one of my writing partners. He's like the yin to my yang. I come up with all of these great ideas like in the middle of the night the spirit just wakes me up and I'm like oh I want to do a series on this you know or I want right. to do a movie on this and so I call Cam immediately and I'm like okay this is what I want to do and within 24 hours he has a treatment laid out for me for me to go and we start building the scripts from there so this was really fun to create you know from the beginning and developing the characters I knew that I wanted a black version of a powerful family yeah. You know, and to be able to show that, you know, that our culture is not about drug dealers and strippers and things of like that, that we are a strong culture, a rich culture. We a lot of us come from money. You know, it's in our bloodline. We help build this country, you know, as a culture. And so I wanted to show us in a strong light. And so I wanted a mixture between Yellowstone and Greenleaf mm -hmm. and all of that just in one. And so we really had a lot of fun creating these characters and really building and expanding on them. Yeah, you did a great job. And, and the cast is just incredible. For you, you, were you familiar with all the actors that you worked with? I was. Everyone, it really, except for John Eyes, to be honest with you, everyone I handpicked. Oh, wow. um, yeah, a lot of times when we're writing scripts or I'm even reading scripts that I've optioned to produce, I already kind of envision who I would like to see in, in the roles. Mm -hmm. And Dawn Halfkenny is someone that I have been following for a few years now heavily. And I knew that she was uber talented and I knew that she had a lot of layers to her talent. And mm -hmm. so I knew immediately when we created the role of Robin, I told Cam, I said, nobody can be in this role, but Dawn Halfkenny, wow. you know, she, she needs it. You know, I knew that I was bringing in, you know, my good friend Victoria to direct it. And so, of course, when Victoria read the script and she was like, um, Elaine, I said, yes, you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I knew that she would have fun, you know, with it. Richard, mm -hmm. Brooks, she did. I mean, oh you, gosh, Victoria yeah. was like so sublime mm -hmm. as the bitchy matriarch mm -hmm. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. she was really great yes and baby i'll tell you that she pretty much never broke character wow where it drove me nuts <laughs> as my friend because i'm like wait a minute who am i talking to victoria or elaine? it's i need victoria right now the director right. not elaine right. <laughs> you know? so we had a lot of fun with that um richard brooks was just a no-brainer you know law mm -hmm. and order his ex you know his experience in the film world has just been great. I mean, he's my mother's boyfriend in her head from Law okay. and Order. I so think she, that's a lot of women's yeah. ideas about Richard Brooks. Yeah. yeah, so she was excited to see him. Um, Shalea Frazier, another one, you know, she played Dorinda Clark in the Clark Sisters mm -hmm. movie. And I really observed her in that movie and knew that there was more to her talent in acting that needed to be showed. So the role of Nia who comes across kind of meek and mild, but she's a little sneaky too. Yeah. I knew that Shalea could have fun with that. Yeah. Dwayne no. Boyd is a hidden talent. You know, he's been around for a long time. He's been in a lot of projects from Hunger Games, a lot of stuff. And he's just someone that has not received his flowers, you know, for as good as he is. And he has an acting school in Atlanta and everything. And actually Dawn, was in his in his acting classes. So it was a full circle moment. And uh -huh. as everyone's been saying on the red carpet, this was really a family unit. Mm -hmm. So yes. I love that. And congratulations on being able to foster that as a producer, thank for being you. able to really create that environment. So thank you. Yeah. And thank you so much, Jamie, for joining me on the red carpet. Yes. And congratulations on this really awesome film. Thank you so much, Bev. Okay. Bye. Bye. 
All right. Up next, we have the man that everyone's been waiting for, Mr. Richard Brooks, a.k.a. Dell, a.k.a. the Patriarch. Welcome, Richard. Hey, hey, welcome. Welcome. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. You're looking incredibly dapper. This oh. is a red carpet. So you have to tell me what you're wearing. I'm just wearing a little paisley and gray. Okay. Yeah. Looking sharp. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. This is one of my favorite designers, actually. I'm not sure why. I just the suits always cut. I always like the styling. So, well, it looks great on you. Uh, what else looked great on you was this role as Dell the Patriarch. I mean, you know, mm. a lot of twists and turns, and and Dell is not who he seems to be. He's he's right. a, he's got a lot of skeletons and a lot of um, scars. Uh, right. So let's talk a little bit about Dell um, the Patriarch. How did you how did you approach that character? Um, well, um, I think I was really in, in sync with uh, Jamie uh, with the idea of a Yellowstone kind of a succession. Mm -hmm. I um, I really was looking for a role that that had that kind of a father figure mm -hmm. who had power, who uh, who was a little ruthless but loved his family and uh, and just was 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 going to hold legacy. You know, it was really it was really important. Uh, our idea of land, land ownership, and mm -hmm. and uh, I think from slavery all the way on to now, I just think that you know property has been like a a big economic uh, barrier for uh, yeah. for us. So to tell the story of how how we're fighting for our land, fighting to keep keep our piece of the rock, uh, and just to have a a crazy ruthless family, and uh, you know just a just a dynamic script and story and director. And so yeah, and, and of course with Victoria involved with it, you know. I can never say say no to Victoria. Whenever she calls me, I'm like, okay, let me see if I can do that because she's she's so talented, so loving, and so 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 particular and specific about all of her choices and with her actors. So uh, and her direction. So yeah, it was, it was just really a great, great, great time. I really love this character. Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you've been at this for a long time, and and um, you know, of course, now we're starting to see a lot more female directors and everything. Mm -hmm. For you, as a as a, a acting vet. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between being directed by a man versus being directed by a woman? Like, do mm -hmm. are there differences in your opinion? Well, uh, that's interesting. I mean, I, I never really try to make a difference, you know, uh, uh, because I trust I trust my directors in general. But what I have found, which is really inspiring, actually, is a uh, is a uh, the female lens. You know, it has a, a different kind of. Um, uh, yeah poetry to it to me you know there's a little bit more of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a grace and the sensitivity uh, that I really gravitate I'm actually trying to like study and learn myself too because I think even as men we can you know we can tap into that a little bit more and uh, and bring a little bit more love you know a little more artistry like vision visuals things like that to the yeah. to the project so you yeah. When I was speaking to Victoria, I mentioned to her that I love the scene where you are on your land, walking your land. You're, mm -hmm. on the yes. there, you're under that gorgeous big tree. Yeah. And I, I have to believe that, that that kind of eye and that kind of, you know, kind of giving you that landscape to play with yeah. is because of what you just mentioned, seeing the beauty in that and knowing that um, without even having to say a word about the space, mm -hmm really giving a message to the audience this is why what he's fighting for this is why he's so ruthless right exactly 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 i love that moment and that, that uh to be on location for this piece was just so amazing i'm so glad tv one uh put us out there you know because it it just it filled it fueled us you know it was it was a uh, it bonded us together and and the land was was beautiful it was really beautiful it was, it was a nice time of year and uh that scene specifically was a great shot that Victoria directed. I just, I knew that I felt that, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and also that moment. Cinematic in scope, right? Huh? It was cinematic in scope. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And then that, and also that reaching out for him, because I felt like it was also a, a somewhat of a vulnerable moment mm -hmm. for Dell, yeah. you know, where he has to really reach to his daughter. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I can't wait to see, see this, see this movie myself. I mean, everyone, was so great in it and uh, so great working with everyone. So I'm just really excited to see the stories and the pieces that I didn't get to see. Awesome. You know? What about getting to see the stories and the pieces continue to uh, Well, you know, I'm here for that. I mean, actually, I, I really, uh, I mean, it, 
it is it was really strange to me how much I love this piece and these characters actually. I was really surprised. I'm still surprised. And uh I really can see it. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it being a great piece and and you know, I'm the kind of actor, I mean, you know, for for better or for worse, I really like to do great work and and try to, you know, do quality work and maybe even award winning work. So yeah. I really feel like this piece has that kind of a that kind of bone structure to it and the possibility. So yeah, so it'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. Hope hopefully everyone tunes in, tune in, tune in, tune in. Tell yeah. your friends, tell everybody, turn on your all your TVs. Yeah. You know, make it happen. Because we do need this kind of these kind of stories. And uh for an actor like myself, I've been in this business for a long time and, and finding roles that really showcase family and give us a 360 view of, of our black experience. And as Jamie was saying, we don't have to be drug dealers and you know, yeah, and things like that. Not that anything's wrong with that, but you know. It is great to see uh, hardworking people who've built generational wealth and who are trying to pass something on to the to the next generation and and, and hold uh, on to whatever they have. By yeah, yeah, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta hold on. We gotta hold on. We gotta buy. We gotta buy real estate. And hold. Yeah, you know? yeah, because Dell is, is a, Dell is a scion, but he's also a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> thank you so much richard and congratulations you were an amazing amazing dell in this and oh, oh thank you we come back um we hope the whole thing comes back as a series we're gonna just right, yeah. good energy yeah thank you so much all right all right good to see you love all right next up we have jason ryan executive in charge of production hello jason hello hello Jason, you're coming to me in a car and you're on the red carpet. You're like the James Corden of this red carpet. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, I, I, I apologize for that. I'm actually um, in the field on another project and I had to make time for this. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for making time for us. Congratulations on Montrose Blood Rules. Such a great film. Um, let's talk a little bit about why you wanted to work with Victoria and um, and why did you think that this was the right piece for TV One? So that's a, that's an easy answer because we had just come off another project with Jamie and Victoria, Stranger Next Door. Dwayne was in that also, and you know our team internally we were talking about the other types of projects that we wanted to do next. Um, mm -hmm. And from that conversation, I reached out to Jamie. I was like, Jamie, we're looking for this type of show. And I gave her a lot more details than that. And she was like, oh, I got, I'm sending two your way um, in the next 24 hours. And she sent it. And, and like, I was on here when she was talking about how her and Cam really dug into this project. And this was one of the ones that she submitted. And it was almost automatic. Like when, when I took that back to the team, um, it, it, it didn't take a lot. It wasn't a hard sell at all because we all really loved it, loved the characters, loved the storyline and everything. And, and we were ready to get right back to it. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, everyone keeps talking about the production value. You know, uh, you know, a lot of times our viewers sometimes feel like if it's a black entity, the value won't, the production value won't be there, but they are going to be pleasantly surprise because the production value is really there. Um, Jason, why was it important for you to put this kind of money um, and, and behind this project? Well, it was, it was important for us to do this project and do it the right way. Um, especially like when Jamie pitched the idea of shooting it in Mississippi and we had never shot anything in Mississippi before and just seeing how beautiful that area was. Um, it was important for us to to do it right. You know, the 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 cast, um, you know, putting together the right cast and getting the right people on there. Like it was it was really important to put in the effort and put in the resources to a project this big, because otherwise, you know, it, we weren't going to do it justice. Yeah. Um, and it is one of the things at TV One that we take pride on is our production value and and showcasing and showing um, black folks as the beautiful people that we are. Um, and this was an, another opportunity for us to to double down on that. Yes, definitely. And and as we keep um, saying, um, it was beautifully shot. Um, the 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 location is actually one of the characters. Um, it's it's just really cinematic in scope. Um, and so that's a Victoria thing, right? How tough is it to work with Victoria? Because 
she's lovely because I know her as a friend. She's lovely, but I know she's very exacting. So is it was, was Victoria on you, Jason? <laughs> well, from from my perspective, from where I was sitting, Victoria was great because you know a lot of the energy that she put into making this look the best it could and making sure the performances were the best that they yeah. could be. That's that's what I wanted to see anyway. So, you right. know, and I know that, you know, she's has a particular way, but I enjoy working with her. And, and like I said, this is the second movie that I have had the privilege to work with Jamie and Victoria as a team. Um, mm -hmm. So I knew what I was getting into with this one. And, and I appreciated it. There were some times where, like Jamie said, where she would stay in character. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that was, you know... I, you're right. But I appreciated it because she was just she was that dedicated to it. But, yeah. you know, when you see the end result, like all of it was worth it. Um, there was so much so much effort put into it um, on all aspects. And I, I had a great experience working with Victoria and Jamie. Now, we've been talking a lot about this becoming a series, Jason. What are we going to do? I mean, you know, you got a real big title, executive in charge of production. So how can we make this happen? I'm going to put you on the spot. Well, you can put me on the spot, but my answer is still, you know, we have to evaluate some things and, and see what what the best um, decision will be if it was up to me. And just based on the show and the characters and everything, like, yeah, it's, it's a no-brainer. However, there's a lot of business decisions that have to be made. I have bosses that I have to um, <laughs> satisfy their needs as well. So it's a, it's a big group collective process. Um, but it's definitely something that we've discussed um, and there hasn't been a no yet. So we'll okay. just keep discussing and keep working on it and see where we go. But, you know, those things have to they, they, they take time. There's a lot of business that has to be taken care of. But, uh -huh. you know, it's, well, it's definitely watch, a conversation. We just watch Montrose Blood Rules. We know how business works and we know if, if, <laughs> if Joe was sitting in that seat, Joe would get it done. So I'm going to say channel your inner <laughs> Joe Jason and get it done. Okay, love? <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Channel my inner Dell. I got you. <laughs> Channel your inner Dell. Thank you so much for taking out the time of your very busy schedule to be with us on the red carpet. I am going to ask you, what are you wearing? It looks like a sweater or a sweatshirt. And the, it's it's just a t-shirt. I have a jacket, but it's a little too hot for that. It's okay, just so a, you have on a t-shirt, navy t-shirt. It's an organic cotton t-shirt. Black. It's black. <laughs> it's black. Okay, organic navy. Uh, I mean, uh, organic. Onyx T-shirt. We'll put a little pizzazz on it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Thank you so much for taking the time out to chat with me. All right. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye. Next up, we're going to have John Eyes, a.k.a. Uncle Teddy, come to the red carpet. Welcome, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. John, I, I'm okay. It's the red carpet, so I gotta ask you what you're wearing, and then we're gonna get straight into it. I like your little pork pie hat. I like your <laughs> little pork pie hat. So I'm that's little, little, sort of Asian style mm -hmm. shirt, you know, and some yeah. nice slacks. Yeah, <laughs> you're looking sharp, babe. Thank you. Now, man. um, Uncle Teddy, oh, he's a proper villain, he's but he's got a lot of nuance to him. So let's talk about when you read him on the page, what, what, how do you approach this character? Because he's very, very interesting and very complex. Well, for me, uh, once I delved into it, uh, Uncle Teddy was just this, first of all, he's a biker. And a lot of bikers, we, I'm a biker. Okay. Uh, a lot of, I'm ex-military. So we deal on principle, we deal on honor. Um, we're really loyal. And that's how Teddy came off, not only to his crew, but it, to his family. Yeah. So, and he's a very intelligent person. The, mm -hmm. the whole family is, they're well-rounded, they're well-traveled. So uh, you don't initially get that from Teddy because you think he's this proper villain, right? And the way you see him as a biker, you don't think he's as knowledgeable, as intellectual as he is. But that's what really gave me that sort of inward thing to go to the family and to the whole situation. Cause Teddy was just, he just rides under the radar, you know? Yeah. But when he shows up, he shows up big, you he know? He shows up and he shows out. And he yeah. has a lot in common with his sister 
who plays the very proper matriarch, Elaine. Um, and, and you would think that they're, they're not really related because from the surface, she's proper and he is a biker. But then as it goes on, you start to see that Elaine might even be a bigger thug than Teddy. <laughs> she is a bigger thug than Teddy. <laughs> you know, she's uh, she's just more suave. She's just more, you know, uh, put together. Yeah. And uh, Teddy has already been there. So he doesn't have that sort of suave deal. He doesn't need it. Yes. You know, but he's back there and he's it's like him and his sister almost twins on it. You know, mm -hmm. when you see these these polar opposites kind of blend in together as the as the movie goes on. And that's what really gets you, you yes. know, about three quarters of the way in, you know, you're yes. like, whoa, wait a minute, you know. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, there are a lot of twists and turns in this because as you said, when initially you think this is a he's a very cut and dry kind of like villain, biker dude, whatever. And then as you go into it, as the story begins to be told, you see Teddy's got a reason for everything that he does. And he's also got a strategy. And that's something that was also very impressive because he's um, he's a strategist. He's not just kind of going out and committing crimes willy nilly. There's a reason. There's a rhyme and a reason for everything that he does. He's calculating. Yes. He's extremely calculated, him and his sister. Yes. And that's what that's what keeps pulling you in inch by inch by inch mm -hmm. is the simple fact that there's something behind this and you're just trying to figure out what's the deal, you know? So uh, with him being so calculating, it, it, it fools you in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then it draws you in as you go along. You're like, wait a minute, something's a little more up with them than I, than I can put my finger on, you know? Yes, definitely. And as Victoria said, I don't know if you you heard of when she was on the red carpet, but she raved about your performance. And I have to tell you, it's something that you should be very proud of because when you're on the screen, it's very hard to take your the, um, the eye off of you because you want to see what Uncle Teddy is up to next. So congratulations on that. Oh, thank you so very much. I mean, you know, every time I hit a set, I mean, first of all, I saw Victoria's name. I saw Rich's name. So me, I always go to the A1s, yeah. you know, and so that's where my pressure comes from because I, I know these people, you know, they, they got it. They're going to bring it. Yeah. So I'm going to bring it. Like, like we say, you go big or go home, <laughs> you know? So I just sucked up everything I possibly could from Uncle Teddy and just brought the, you know, brought the hammer to it, you know? You definitely did. You definitely brought the hammer down and thank you so much for being on the red carpet with me and thank you for this incredible portrayal of Uncle Teddy. It was awesome watching you. Thank you for having me. Of course, John. Take care now. You too. Bye. Next up, we're going to have Dwayne Boyd, a.k.a. Jackie. Hello, Dwayne. Hey there. How you doing? It's nice to see you. Oh, wow, Dwayne. <laughs> you said it's a red carpet. You yeah. said, I'm going to be in a mansion, and I'm going to have one my tuxedo. <laughs> Looking good, babe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, so what are you wearing? Uh, you know, I said, since this is Montrose Blood Rules, I said, let me put on the Montrose. Most people know this is burgundy, but I call it Montrose Blood Red. So, um, <laughs> that's Miguel Wilson fashion. He's a designer out of Atlanta. He has stores in Miami, New York, and D.C., but he, he put this look together for me today, and I'm excited to be here. So I said, let me, let me dress the part. Well, I love it. Well, you play the brother, Jackie. You're the lone brother. Yes. And, um... You are a complex character mm -hmm. um, because you are the sheriff, but you also have a past that's not what you would necessarily think a sheriff would have. Right, right. Oh, so, why? Why did you approach Jackie in the in the way that you did? You and, know, and what did you take from the Jackie character? You know, I like a lot of things about Jackie. I mean, you know, we're all put in situations sometimes where we want to do the right thing, but we're kind of torn, especially when it comes to family. You know, a lot of times uh, our family are not doing the right thing, so we try to take care of them in a way that also puts us in a situation. So I have two sisters, so this was easy for me to play and understand Jackie because, you know, I have two sisters on the show as well. Donna, she did an amazing job. So I was able to tap into Jackie by um, just dealing with my own sisters' relationships, and I love my sisters doing it. I'll do anything for them, so... You know, uh, that's one of the things that I, I gravitated towards when it came to Jackie, understanding that character. And it was well-written, so I've been waiting on something like this for the past 20 years. So, so. Wow. 
Well, I guess it's very well written. Um, and of course, directed by the amazing Victoria Rowell. Uh, what was it like working with her? You know, it was a dream come true. You know, I've been watching on TV for years and movies and stuff. And, you know, so to be able to work with her was amazing. She's a, she's an actress and a director. And to me, I think those make some of the best directors. Somebody that can really help you understand what the character demands are, what, what the character's fighting for every scene. She came and broke everything down. Her blocking was phenomenal. So everything she did on set, just I was just in awe. I was learning and, and watching and, and taking all this in and just, just, just in awe of the whole experience. Yes, well... Congratulations on being a part of this really amazing film. And um, hopefully we'll see you back when it returns as a series. We're just going to put that out there in the, the universe, okay? It's already done. All right. Thank you so much, Wayne. Thank you. Take care now. Okay, next up we have Shalea Frazier, a.k.a. Nia. Hello. Shalea, now, baby, you are good. So you came to slay, not to play. Wait a second. I have been loving you and watching you for years. I was like, I have to show up for Bambi. <laughs> you, and you definitely did. You look gorgeous, my love. What are you wearing? Thank you. I'm wearing Hamel. Um, he's a designer out of Serbia. And a, you know, a little fair common moment. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you, can, you are sparkle plenty, my love. You are looking good. Thank you. you Thank you really so good. much. Now you play Nia, and you're you're the sister that's a little more meek and mild, and and almost kind of like not forgotten, but kind of taken for granted. Yes, but but let me tell you something. Don't count Nia out, honey. <laughs> <laughs> she may be baby girl. She's baby girl. You know everybody. I think it's it's not so much counting her out. I think they just they're they're almost trying to protect her. That's how I'm seeing it. You know. Yeah. Um, kind of coddling that she's a baby. They almost don't want to protect her innocence. Um, but but yeah, I, I got some answers that I, I need to find out. And I'm going to yeah. do whatever is necessary to find out what I need to find out. <laughs> Indeed. It's so interesting because it seems like everyone that's a part of the Montrose family has a ruthless streak to them, no yeah. matter what. Even you as the baby girl, there's like this little tinge. We see these little hints of who you could be if you were let off the leash. Because you've got this fiance who wants to take care of you. You, of course, got your parents who want to take care of you. Yeah. But there's something in and Nia that wants to act. I feel like she wants to take care of herself. And and I, I feel like she's gonna break out. I I agree. I totally agree with you, baby. And and I to be honest, I think that's in all of us. You know, I, I think there's this this instinct that will kick in, you know, when it needs to. And I think hers uh is in her blood. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um so she could she knows how to go there but um i i think that's in in all of us i think we have we have that we have that um that in us to almost be a villain and yeah. a victim you yeah. know um i think that's that's just something that's a part of all of us a human nature thing yeah 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 yes Shalea, thank you so much for coming through on the red carpet you look smashing my love and i cannot wait to meet you and then we're gonna have we'll have champagne when we're wearing our red carpet clothes. Okay. There we go. There we there go. go. Thank you so much. Such a thank pleasure. Thank you, baby. Thank you, you are stunning. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Now coming to the red carpet is Kamel Goffin, who plays Travis. Hello, Kamel. How you doing? Uh let me just scratch. It's K Mel. Oh, I'm sorry, K Mel. Let me yes, just now coming to the red carpet is K Mel Goffin. Welcome, Travis. Thank you for having me. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, uh, thank you so much for being a part of the red carpet. I know that you're like running around doing a lot of things, which is why you're not in your red carpet duds because you were actually at jury duty. I was at jury duty and I was stressing because I was like, listen, I'm not about to let these people stop me from getting where I need to be for my career. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. Come out. Speaking of your career, you play Travis. It's a really, really great role. But why did you want to work with Victoria Rowell? Because I'm sure that she was a big attraction to you, yes? Yeah, uh, it's, I think it's, first of all, she's she's a legend. Uh, she's been in the business for forever. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's important when you have an actor as a director, because like like Dwayne was saying, they have a different understanding mm -hmm. of what how to, how to express what they want from us. But also, the most important thing is they know how to protect our energy. Yes. Um, a lot of the times people are, are 
they don't they don't really understand what we got to go through to get where we have to go internally. Right. So a lot of we're, we're dealing with chaos around us, but we we're we we're, we're still obligated to do what's necessary. So to have a director that can protect that is is important for us as creatives. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And what was your experience like being on the TV one set? And I mean, the fact that you guys were on location, what was that like for you? Oh, I, listen, this is the stuff that you dream of when it first when you first start. Like, oh, they flying me. I got flewed out. They sent me to Mississippi. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> my, you get your hotel in. You know, I felt like I was supposed to be treated, you know. Right, right. So so yeah, I loved it. Um it, it was dope. Everybody on the set was 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 dope. Every we had good chemistry. It was and you know, I worked with Jamie in previous projects, so that that was already it felt like I was working with family with, yeah. with the Hillionaire crew. So it was it was dope. And everyone keeps saying that that term family. It felt like family. And that's so awesome because it is a, a show, it is a film about family dynamics. And yeah. so it's 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 important that that kind of transcended beyond just the screen and it went on like when you guys were on set as well. Absolutely. Uh, you know, because a lot of times when you work with creators, sometimes you gotta deal with egos and things like that. And Nobody displayed any kind of ego. It was it was no, you know what I've been on before. You know who I am. Right. Nobody was like that. Everybody came, focused, and was fully present on what we were doing at the time, and that was it. Like we we got to work. We we played around off off camera, did little TikToks. It was it was dope. We had fun. Well, congratulations, my love, and I know I'm, I'll be seeing you time and again on many things, and hopefully I'll be seeing you again on the Montrose the series. Okay. Speak it. Hallelujah. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to speak it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, my Hallelujah. love. And enjoy jury duty. Said no. I'm done. Listen, no. I don't, listen, no. I don't, know. I don't um, even want to talk about that. That don't even exist while we're here. Right, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, love. Have a good one. Thank you. You too. Bye. Okay, loves. Now, next up, we have Dawn Half Kenny, who plays Robin. Dawn. Hello, the beautiful Bevy Smith. How are well, you? Congratulations, baby. You put your foot all up and through, Robin. I mean, congratulations. Really, really great, solid work. Yes, Miss Bevy. Thank you so very much. It was an absolute honor to play Robin Montrose. You know, a lot of people have asked me, and Robin is an absolute boss, okay? Mm -hmm. From the time she enters the room, she demands respect. Mm -hmm. And she uh, she's intelligent. She's educated. She's a criminal defense attorney. Mm -hmm. She's stylish. She's uh, a secret keeper. Oh, yes. Yes. A lot like myself as well. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, really, Dawn. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. But it was an absolute um, honor to play Robin and, you know, to work alongside such talent was um, a true blessing. Yes. Especially because you were earmarked like people. They wanted you. That specifically, you know, yes. Victoria's like, we want it dawn. Yes. That's How does that make you feel to know that your name is being spoken in rooms that your feet have not even entered? I have to be honest with you, Miss Bevy. It's, it's, and I'm speechless. Um, you know, I'm absolutely thankful. Um, I've told Jamie before that in this industry, all we ask for, all we need is one yes. And this project has been my yes. And yes. I don't have enough tongues to really show my gratitude, but it's been an honor to work with so many talented individuals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and of course you have really pivotal scenes with both Victoria and Richard. What was it like having them be your parental figures? Uh, well, I had the opportunity to work with Victoria in the past and, you know, she's a phenomenal actor, but to see her put on her director hat, uh, mm -hmm. I had the utmost respect for her. She's yeah. extremely detailed. Uh, she is what we like to call an actor director. So basically mm -hmm. she's caring. She's um, She knows exactly what she wants out of us actors and she gets that. She, you know, she challenges us to continue to do our best because that's exactly what she wants. She genuinely wants the best for us. And yeah. you know, Richard, he was just a phenomenal person and a phenomenal soul. You know, I got a chance to talk to him not only on set, but of course off set. And he was just um just amazing to work with. Yeah. And John, what would, what do you hope that people will what why should they come to Montrose Blood Rules? Why because well, it's not just the average kind of like story about 
crime and murder and mayhem. There's something deeper at play. So tell them why they should be tuning in. Well, of course they should tune in because this is considered a suspense, a thriller, but it also talks about the dynamic of a family. And, you know, so many families, they have these topics or these secrets that they like to sweep under the rug. That's but right. Montrose is a project that lets you, that lets the audience know it's okay to have those uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have and feel those emotions. It's okay to talk about those topics that most people aren't willing to talk about. Yeah. So we want everyone to watch. We want everyone to tune in. We want everyone to like, share, and, yeah. you know, just enjoy the project. And perhaps be inspired to unearth some of your own family secrets and get them out into the open. That part. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that part. Thank you so much, Dawn, and congratulations. Oh, wait, before we go, baby, because it is a red carpet and you do look resplendent in your gold, love. Thank what you. are you wearing? Well, you know, this is a jumper that I absolutely love. It's gold. It, com it complements my olive skin. And of course, a nice little slick back ponytail, you know, just something <laughs> just something cute. And Miss Bevy, you need to change your name to the beautiful Bevy Smith. Oh, thank you, baby. I appreciate it. I'm going to take all that and I cannot wait to meet you in person. Congratulations. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>